me moving my hostile wheels for no apparent reason other than trying to get a cool thumbnail. But let's go ahead and show you guys basically what these wheels are. Three of them are over there for the thumbnail and this one right here. We're gonna open it up and I'm gonna show you guys the new 24 by 14 hostile wheels. guys welcome back to another video today this is gonna be like a Daytona crunch time part one meaning we're trying to get this truck ready for Daytona we got plenty of stuff to do this is definitely on the on the list new wheels on the list for sure here we have the new hostile wheels I'm gonna show you guys what the wheels look like with the box that's inside because that, that one's already open I just placed these over here for uh, for the thumbnail. All right, let's go ahead and open this bad boy up. So, let me show you guys. This is it, Hostel wheels, full black, 24 by 14. This one's been opened already. Cam and some of my other friends have stopped by before and they, they looked at the wheel. So here it is. Our brand new 24 by 14 Hostel Reaper. So this is their brand new wheel for 2021. The reason why I chose this wheel is because this is completely matte black or satin black I should say. And this is exactly what I wanted and there's a really good reason for that. So typically I like my wheels with milled edges. I don't usually like all black wheels. I like having milled edges or some sort of contrast on the wheel, especially on the Denali that I had last. The reason for that was that Denali was black and had chrome accents all over the truck. So I wanted a wheel that had you know chrome accents all over it as well or milled accents all over it as well. And the Archon wheels I had at the time fit that truck perfectly. When we bought the 2020, it's an AT4. It's not a Denali. It doesn't have the fancy chrome all over the truck, which actually worked out perfectly because I didn't really want to do another Denali. Uh, although I like having Denalis, um, I told myself if I got another black truck, I want this truck to be murdered out. I want it to be blacked out. I don't really want to do any kind of chrome. So it really worked out that I got the AT4 version. Now I can actually murder it out without feeling bad because before I did not want to murder out a Denali because I feel like to me part of having a Denali was having that chrome accent. So the goal right now with the 2020 is murdering everything out. So all the chrome that's on there we're going to get rid of. All the red that's on there we're going to get rid of. Everything is going to be black. Huge shout out to Hostel Mike and the guys over at Hostel for getting a set of 24 by 14 here so quickly because the pandemic has really fudged everything up. I mean, shipping is, the wheels are out of stock everywhere and it's just so hard to get a set, especially uh, with the show season coming up. I was worried that I wasn't gonna be able to get another set of 24 by 14s in time for Daytona. So let's go ahead and take that wheel and put it next to the truck and just kind of see how it looks. All right, here we have it. Those look so good, wow. I'm not gonna lie, those TIS wheels look really good too, but with the overall theme that I'm going with, those hostels look absolutely killer. Wow, I'm, I'm really happy with the way they turned out. Sun's too strong outside, so I gotta come back in here. With those hostel wheels, I can already hear some of the questions you guys are gonna be asking in the comments below. I'm gonna go ahead and try to answer now. You guys are probably wondering why I went with cast wheel versus forged wheel. And I, honestly, I'm not gonna lie, hostile forged wheels look really good. Uh, so speaking of hostile forged, Mark is actually gonna put a set of hostile forged wheels on his Duramax. You guys are probably wondering, what do you mean he bought a set of hostiles? He got some other wheel about, uh, about a month ago. Well, there's been a lot of drama and issues uh, with that particular company. I'm um, not gonna really go into detail now. I'm gonna wait until I meet up with Mark because he, he can probably tell you guys more about it just because he's the one that had to deal with their drama. But basically, um, we made I made a video, I made a video about 
a month ago when we went to go pick up the wheels. And literally, we complimented that wheel company and the wheel so many times in that video. Wow, yeah, they're really nice. Dang, that does look pretty good. Yeah. That wheel. Mm -hmm. Whew. However, we were disappointed in the finish because there were tool marks. You just need to polish it out. Mm -hmm. You guys see that? See those like little swirl marks? Almost like the machine finish. Like in some areas you can see it more. Like this one, they left more of it. This one is like almost really good. Other than that, I mean, it looks flawless, right? Yep. Other than that, it just... But all the wheels are kind of like that. And we talked about it. That's what we do. We voice our opinions. But we weren't bashing that company at all. Like we loved that wheel. The design was awesome. Finish was pretty good except for the tool marks. And we were just a little disappointed because we had such high expectation. And when we picked up the wheel, we weren't expecting the tool marks. And the company, the owner of the company came out and told us it was completely normal. So we were like, that doesn't seem normal because I mean, my drop stars don't have the tool marks. So we talked about it and asked you guys what you guys thought. And you guys all agree that it wasn't normal. And apparently the company, the wheel company did not like that. And they threatened to sue us multiple times, multiple times. It wasn't just once. They, they said we needed to take the video down. They said they never gave us permission to film, but they did. I mean, that's basically what happened in a way, but there's way more to the story that Mark can tell you guys about. But yeah, we, we just didn't wanna, Mark didn't wanna be part of a company that was gonna continue to threaten him. And I don't know why they were threatening him because I posted the video, it's my video. I'm in charge of myself, Mark's not in charge of me and who, when what, up, what gets uploaded on YouTube. So they really should have reached out to me and you know, threaten me directly, not threaten Mark because he has nothing to do with it, which kind of made me upset. You know, Mark had, Mark was Mark is just a customer. He he didn't do anything wrong. None of us did anything wrong, but they came out threatening to sue us, which we didn't like that at all. I mean, I, we didn't think that was cool. Anyway, with that being said, uh, Mark didn't want to be part of that company at all, so he switched over to Hostel Forge. So welcome to Team Hostel once again, Mark. Uh, it's kind of funny because Mark's previous truck had a big hostile decal. Everyone thought he was like sponsored by hostile or he, they thought he was like a hostile vehicle, but really he just liked the logo. Anyway, welcome to Team Hostile, Mark. So it'll be me, Mark, and Matthias all running hostile wheels on our 2020s, which is going to be pretty awesome. Anyway, the reason why, uh, like I said, I would have loved to bought, uh, have bought a set of forged wheels, but at the end of the day, like I was saying, I was really trying to go for that black murdered out look. Polished wheels would not fit that look that I was going for. And because I was gonna do black wheels, I, I didn't really think it would matter if I went forged or cast. And the availability for forged wheels are just so low with really hostile, but really any other wheel company. You, you're, you're, you're expected to wait at least two months and then more. So I did not want to uh, take that chance of ordering a set of wheels and they tell me two months of wait time and then it ends up taking like six months and I have like no wheels to take to Daytona with me. So I wanted a set of wheels that look good but were available right now. And cast wheels are available, whereas like I said, forged wheels are not. And speaking of Daytona, I haven't revealed it on YouTube. I did reveal it on uh, Instagram. I my the, my 2020. The reason why I'm getting the 2020 ready for Daytona is because it's gonna be at a booth, and I think this video really gives it away. So I'm gonna tell you guys. I'll be at the hostel booth. Yeah. So hostel asked me to have my truck at their booth representing their wheels, representing the hostel Reaper. These are the new wheels for 2021. Uh, they said my truck would be a good fit to be presented at, at the booth. I'll be there at the booth with a few other people who are my friends. I'm super excited because I get to be at a booth, one, with my friends, and two, for a company that I've liked for so long. So I'm super stoked. I cannot believe I got offered a spot in Daytona with Hostel. Like, I would have never imagined a big company like Hostel would want my truck 
at, at their booth. So I'm excited for that, so stay tuned. Plans that we have for Daytona would be, obviously we're gonna do a bigger lift. If you guys know me, if you guys follow my channel, follow my builds, I think you guys can guess which lift kit I'm gonna go with. Leave a comment below right now. Yes, I'm gonna go with nine inch Mugoi's lift and I'm gonna do the black stainless steel kit, which is perfect because like I said, I'm gonna go for that murdered out look. I'm not really gonna powder coat any of my suspension parts. I'm gonna keep it all black. And the stainless steel that comes with it, it gives you that like chrome accent. I wanna say I'm probably gonna powder coat all of that black. So it's gonna be a complete murdered out lift kit. Let me know what you guys think. Should I leave the chrome, the stainless steel piece on the Mugoy's cross member stainless steel? Or should I completely murder out that lift kit? I don't think I've seen anybody do it and I think it'll look really good if I do it right with the overall theme of the truck. Right now we're looking at nine inch Mugoy's lift, 24 by 14 hostile wheels that came in. And right now, the next delivery I'm expecting is 38 by 1550 Fury MTs, exact same tire as Mark. So my truck and Mark Jeffcoat's truck is gonna be identical in term, actually it's gonna be the exact same in terms of wheel lift tire size and setup. However, Mark's truck is gonna be way more detailed and intricate compared to mine because all my components are just gonna be black. We still got a color match defender. Uh, I got a paint defender, gloss black. We got to paint the mirror gloss black. I gotta take my headlights to fill and get that paint matched, get everything colored black and do the cheese delete. So that's, uh, and my exhaust is gonna be a little bit louder. So yeah, those are some of the big plans for the truck. And I, I think we have two months left until Daytona. So yeah, Daytona crunch time has officially started, you guys. So don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I know statistically like 50% of the people watching my videos aren't subscribed. So if you're watching this, hit that subscribe button right now. Just do me a favor, hit that subscribe button now and you can follow the journey and you'll get All right, so we got this drive shaft off of the 2021 Cummins. So we're gonna start off, we're polishing this drive shaft, obviously. We're gonna start off with 600. 600 grit. Hopefully that works, does. hopefully that's good enough. I think it'll work. So let's get started. Start on the rough spots, I guess, first. <laughs> <laughs> Turn your stuff off when you're done using it, Stan. <laughs> Sanded with 220 and 600. Now we're ready to actually start polishing it. Do it. All right, Matt's gonna try polishing it. So this is what we've done so far, and it looks really good. So this is it's the pink pad and the brown compound, and it almost pretty much already has mirror-like finish. Uh, we still have two more pads and two more compounds to go.
All right, so this is after sanding with 600, well, 220, 600, and then we use the pink pad with the brown compound. And then up next, we're gonna use the yellow pad with the green compound. And then after that, it should be the white pad with the purple, purple compound, and it should have pretty mirror-like finish. I mean, it's already pretty good, so I'm excited to see how this will turn out. All right, so this is after the yellow pad and the green compound. So the last is the white pad and the purple compound. But yeah, check it out. Look at my hand. Look at that, it looks pretty good. I mean, you can see my reflection pretty clearly. You can see my camera. Yeah, not too bad. All right, just a couple hours later, I got stuff all over my face. Just a couple hours later, got everything, or got the drive shaft all polished. This was our first time doing it, but here is the final product. I think it looks really good. We're pretty proud. Ready? Boom. That is not too bad for our first time polishing a drive shaft. Drive shaft. I concur. <laughs> yeah. I think so. If you look, I mean, you could see the reflection pretty good. Yeah, not too bad. I mean, for we only sanded 220 and then 600. I mean, we really could have done 220, 400, 600, and possibly even went all the way to like a thousand grit. But it was our first time, and we watched the TikTok video where this guy only did. 400 and 600 so that's what we tried and I mean we're happy with it looks pretty good so I might do this with my 2020 but yeah if you guys are ever wondering if Renegade product actually works well there you go it made yeah first time it's our first time and it makes us kind of look like pros a little bit <laughs> it makes it makes us look like we know what we're doing <laughs> 